Welcome to Paranormal Universe. Hello and welcome to Paranormal Universe. I'm Chris. And I'm Tina. And this is episode eight. So, uh, Tina, guess what? What? We have listeners in 20 countries now. Hey, hey, now. Yeah, it's awesome. I love it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, all you beautiful people out there for listening to us. Yes. Yeah, so that's pretty um, exciting. Anyway, uh, so yeah, how's your day been? Great. How about you? It's been fantastic. It's been hotter than... It has been. I don't know what, but yeah. That heat. As soon as I open up the door, and what time? What time we leave at twelve? As soon as I open up the door, the heat punched me in the face. I just felt like it just it just took over everything. All my senses were just violated by the heat today. Did you melt a little? A little bit. (laughs) Just a little bit. It was so hot. The AC in the car just wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't rocking right. Disrespectful heat, huh? It, it, yeah, it it was that that AC wasn't working at all. But yeah, so I'm not going outside tomorrow. <laughs> I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to sit upstairs. I'm turn the AC on sixty, and I'm going to turn a fan on, and I'm going to freeze myself. I want it to be so cold in here tomorrow that I see my breath. Oh Lord, and that's how cold I want it to be because the heat has been disrespectful. So yeah. Anyhow, I think they're tired of hearing us ramble. It's only about a minute of rambling, but you know, let's <laughs> <laughs> let's 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 get to it. We have some uh, pretty good stories for you again today. Um, this is a story I have from Umbrella Man. Ooh, yeah, it, it sounds like a scary title, but that's that's the username he gave me. It was Umbrella Man told me to use Umbrella Man, so this is Umbrella Man. He's always gonna stay dry. Yeah, but it sounds scary. It sounds like a. Uh, this sounds like a something from like the Conjuring series. Umbrella Man. Umbrella Man is haunting somebody's house right now. That would be a good one. <laughs> the Conjuring. Yeah. It just sounds like something scary in that in that Conjuring universe with you know the the nun, which was an awful movie, but the nun, but. <laughs> <laughs> in both the Conjuring movies and, and Annabelle, and it just seems like, like, like Umbrella Man will go right in there, right in there. Perfect title. Why can't he just be prepared? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Umbrella Man is known for carrying umbrellas. I don't know. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm making fun of his username, but it's a pretty cool user username. It sounds like a title of a pretty scary movie. I wish I'd have come up with a cool username like that. Anyway, so. This is from Umbrella Man. All right. I'm 21, currently living back with my parents in a very large city in Kansas, near Kansas City. I have many short stories about my random experiences in the apartment that I grew up in, as well as the house I used to live in with a roommate in rural northeastern Kansas. One additional note about the rural rural house, I hate that word, Rural house is that I live directly between two Native American reservations, Prairie Band and Potawatomi and Kickapoo, with myself having having ties to Apache and my roommate at the time having ties to Navajo. The earliest instance of weird things happening that I can clearly remember is when I was around seven or eight years old. It was a holiday, either Christmas or Easter, and both my brothers and I would share a bed on these holidays to keep us accountable so we don't sneak off. We didn't sneak off and get an early peek at what Santa or the Easter Bunny brought us. This particular time, we were in my older brother's room, the furthest room back in the apartment. My little brother was closest to the wall, then my older brother between us and me by the door. It was likely around 11 p.m. or so, and I was obviously the only one awake. I felt a weight, not on top of me, and not a feeling of doom or anything like that, but I physically felt what I can only explain as if somebody were to sit down on the mattress near my legs. I don't remember my exact thoughts as this happened, but I was scared. I lay there in fear for a few minutes before I got the courage to get up and leave the room. From that point, that is all I remember. Sometimes, even today, 
I still feel similar things in this apartment. Most recently, it felt lighter, as if a cat had jumped up on the mattress next to me and was walking around, but of course, I saw nothing. With all the other strange events that I've been through, I didn't care anymore. I let it happen and sometimes even vocally address whatever it is that is with me. Last year, while just living my life as normal, no matter where I was, I would occasionally hear a whistle. It was always the same whistle, somebody trying to get my attention, perhaps. It, I was, it was always the same pitch, seemingly from the same distance, and I would always look around to find the source, though it only happened when I was alone. Alone as in outside, in the country, with nobody around, possibly for miles. This would happen at least six times a week and lasted for a few months, but I haven't heard that whistle since December. In 2017, my uncle Mike passed away in Mississippi. He was my dad's last living relative. We knew that his time was coming as he was losing himself to cancer. But when things started getting worse for him, the grandfather clock that we have would inexplicably stop. It's never done that in the past. The pendulum was always moving and the weights were always raised. But for some reason, the pendulum would stop once in the morning and once in the evening. Not at the same times, but this happened every day for a week. When we got the call that Mike had finally passed, the first thing my dad said was, I got to check that fucking clock. And sure enough, it wasn't moving. Once we got the clock ticking again after Mike's passing, we, we have since never had an issue with it stopping. As the only living family, we all drove down to Mississippi to help take care of things after his passing. While out front of Mike's rundown shack, I saw something that I have never seen before, a bald eagle in the wild, flying over Mike's house and directly over us. In Bay St. Louis, Mississippi, on the Gulf, Co on the Gulf Coast, not exactly a place they're commonly seen. Mike practiced a strange religion and was known as a wizard. His name was Michael Blue Eagle. Moving now to the rural house with my roommate, the first incident to occur there was the usual paranormal activity, such as doors and cabinets opening and closing. With both of us experiencing things throughout life, neither of us were really shocked and, it, and didn't make a big deal out of it. Other random things went on here and there, between plastic water bottles getting thrown and guitar strings randomly strumming, but nothing too crazy in our opinions. Then came those entities. As mentioned, we lived in an area full of native land and culture, and with both of us having native blood, we knew a thing or two about yenodushi, which are skinwalkers and shapeshifters. But we weren't the most well-versed with everything that you need to know about them. So we, if, if we needed help or wanted to have a conversation about them, I would invite my Kickapoo friends to join us. One of my very white friends has had a couple of run-ins with them on the road and even at his house, but those are stories for another time. My own story of being near one is when I was driving home from work at about 3 a.m. The drive was 30 miles, and I have driven it many times, and I knew every inch of that highway. It was business as usual, Cruise control at 78 miles per hour, keeping it between the lines, empty highway with the occasional semi or county sheriff's deputy. There are signs saying that you are now entering native land, but that's where I saw it. I didn't look directly at it, but I saw it enough to know. What I saw sitting on top of the sign was a very large set of wings, bigger than a hawk, bigger than an eagle, and I mean twice the size of a turkey vulture, which is the large bird that we have in that area. It seemed almost human size. It was dark with a wingspan of what I can only guess to be about five feet just perched on top of that thin metal road sign. It seemed impossible. I turned off my music, which is usually blasting, just to enjoy the ride home, and I just stared at the road. Empty thoughts, too scared to look in the mirror, and my eyes full of tears. My mind didn't tell me that I was scared, but my body did. I drove in silent fear all the way back home, and I ran inside. Outside of the house, we would hear unusual things. Bipedal footsteps coming from the tree line, random rustling, and owls. Fucking owls. Strange how the owls only made noise when we were discussing the entities. I no longer fuck with owls. I don't fuck with any bird. No <laughs> birds. Birds are not to be trusted. No birds. Especially if I saw an owl, I would shit myself. That's one of the things about trees. 
If I was to look up into a tree, they're creepy. Have you seen an owl in person? Um, at the zoo. Yeah, <laughs> at the zoo. Imagine seeing that in the wild, just sitting perched on a tree branch. No, ma'am. No owls for me. I don't even like birds, but that's not a bird to me. That's a monster with wings. Anything that flies, especially like a bat. <laughs> <laughs> Remember I told you the story I got attacked by that bat? It was hanging on to your book yeah. for your life. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> If somebody was watching me, they got a good laugh. If somebody was recording me, they probably, I probably went viral at some point and I don't even know it <laughs> because I fought that bat. I fought the bat. I was fighting with it and I knocked it into the bushes. You fought that bat with I your did. life? I huh? did, yeah. Yeah, it was on my backpack and I heard it like squeaking and making those noise. It was in my ear and I just, I panicked. I panicked. I threw the backpack off. And I just start swinging, and I saw something fall into the bushes. I'm pretty sure I slapped it into the bushes, and I ran in the house. I didn't even close my door. That might have been Batman. <sighs> wasn't Batman. No, ma'am. <laughs> I don't know who that was, but it wasn't Batman. <laughs> okay, well, continuing the story. <laughs> One of my Kickapoo friends gave me a chunk of obsidian to keep around in order to pr- protect myself in the house. However, one day it disappeared. I only kept it at the house in the same place, and my roommate didn't even know where I kept it. He was at work that day. I went in and worked a short shift, and I got home before he did, so it was impossible for him to be there when I discovered it was gone. I searched the entire house up and down, and mind you, it was only a two-bedroom house, so there wasn't a lot of places it could be. It was just gone. I still have no idea what happened to it. I moved back in with my parents in January, and I've not experienced anything that I haven't before. However, the entities that I encountered at my old house still bother me just to think about, and at times I get scared for no reason and I get paranoid. It's 2.13 a.m. right as I'm typing this piece. I just heard a loud tap on my bedroom window. Immediately, here I am again, not necessarily fight or flight scared or frozen in fear, but crying and chills scared. It's all involuntary, and it freaks me out. That's... Wow, this is um that's pretty that's that's pretty scary, especially when they mentioned that this was about five feet tall and had wings standing on top the of the wingspan is was five feet was, about well five okay. feet. Okay. And about did they mention how tall it stood? No. He, but he said it was uh, the size of a human. Okay, so maybe at least three three to five feet tall. Yeah. If you think of something that has a wingspan of five feet, you're five four. Okay. So think of think of something that's four inches that that's the wingspan on this thing. The the size of you is the wingspan. Okay, and I'm pretty I'm considered to be a short person. Um, so I'm about five foot two. Oh, you're five two? I thought you were five four this whole time. No. Aww. <laughs> you always call me you're short. So, tiny. so the um that movie Jeepers Creepers, um, there's that that awful creature in that movie that it it goes around and kidnaps um, the individuals it needs to get the body parts that it needs, basically, right? Yeah, Jeepers Creepers. I hated that movie. That, that was a scary movie. <laughs> it was, but look at this. What was that creature doing on top of that sign? What was it waiting for? And then this this story has the missing um obsidian. So I maybe I should go and check my crystals and make sure they're where I left them because <sighs> why would they just come up missing all the all of the sudden? I have mine locked up. I have a piece of obsidian locked up, but after hearing this, maybe I should go and check on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is, um, I don't know, I think I would, would be totally freaked out because I want to know how big the highway sign is, like, in in comparison to the size of whatever was sitting on it. Yeah, because I doubt it could like, support the weight of, like, someone my size. Because <laughs> when, when I think of the highway sign, it's, you know, telling you, you know, you're approaching something. It's It's usually those pretty decent-sized square signs. Yeah. Not the little smaller rectangular ones, but a decent sized square one like the ones that show like when you're coming up on like a, a park uh, and, and they're brown, those brown signs. Yeah. That's what I think about when he when, when he said that. Still but, thin and, and not 
thick enough to support yeah, the weight. Yeah, of- I wouldn't think that a person would be able to sit on it, like, or stand and crouch on it, like, and then it's thin, like, so if somebody is standing, you would think it would hurt their feet. Or at least to bend to, the sign. Yeah. It- <laughs> so this is this is big. This is really big, and um, this is this is terrifying. Yeah. And then you have all the other things that happen, and then with the clock. Um, yeah, the clock uh, stopping. Yeah. I wonder if the clock stopped at, at if before he his uncle passed, if if the clock was stopping at his time of death before. Because remember, yeah. he said his dad checked the clock and sure enough, it was stopped. I wonder if previously that's what time the clock was stopping was at his ac- his actual time of death because he said it, st- it did it twice a day. So Yeah, at the exact same time, twice a day. That- I wonder if that was, that time was the, the time of death too, hmm. previously to the man dying. So hopefully if you're listening, you will <clears throat> be able to send a response and answer that question for us. Um, that would be awesome. Yeah. Um, that was a great story. Thank you for sharing that story. Yeah, it was. It's really great. That's I think that's our first skinwalker uh type of story. Cause that's that's honestly what it sounds like. Some sort of skinwalker. Definitely not a ghost or anything like that. Yeah, very, very, very interesting. Yeah. Um, that story is gonna be one I'm gonna think about for quite a while. <laughs> and um I hope you are okay because this is still this story seems like it still has um, things that are messing with you. Um, so I hope things are okay with you. All right, what you got for me? Um, I have uh, a haunted apartment. Um, this story was sent in by A.A. A. Child Hurry. So please forgive me if I did not say that correctly. I am a 17-year-old and I live in Bangladesh. I live with my parents and two brothers in an apartment we own. My parents bought it before I was born. We've been hearing sounds like heavy furniture moving in the apartment above us at midnight and sometimes sounds of stomping in our apartment since I was four. My mom asked the owners of the apartment about this, but they claimed to have never heard or moved anything that late at night. One night around 3 a.m. in 2017, my dad went to the washroom and he ran back out asking if any of us came near the washroom or not. (laughs) That scary washroom. (laughs) Um, None of us did, and he told us to check the apartment to see if there's an intruder. After an hour of searching, this must be a really big apartment. (laughs) We were sure that there was no intruder. He explained why he made a search. He was very sure he saw a shadow around three feet tall, short intruder at that, and it ran the moment my dad saw it. A few months after this incident, my dad felt something push him in the washroom. In April of 2018, my dad saw the shadow again. He called us from our rooms at about 2 a.m. This time, I told everyone to be quiet and go into my room. I turned off every electrical appliance but left on the lights. It was so quiet that I could hear the fan from the apartment upstairs. I sat in the room where my dad saw the shadow and turned on my phone camera. I asked if anything is here in this apartment, please give me a sign. You can show yourself or move the bottle. If you can push people, you can push this bottle. If anything is here, please give me a sign. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a black figure standing on the balcony. Our balcony is connected with three rooms, so it's a big balcony. I quickly turned my head, and it was there. The shadow was there. It was a translucent, dark human-like figure three feet tall, and no face. Even though it was translucent and had no face, I could feel the shadow was looking at me. I froze for a second, and then I quickly pointed my camera at the window in hopes of having proof, but it ran before I got the chance to get the camera on it. I ran to do it, but as soon as I reached the balcony and turned to the direction, it ran where it it was nothing there. It disappeared before I reached the balcony. I came back to my room and asked my dad, is the shadow you saw translucent? He said yes. And it was about three feet tall. Again, he answered yes. Did it have a face? No, it didn't, he replied. I was now sure that I saw the same thing my dad saw. I concentrated on the video, hoping that I got something, 
But when I reached the part where I saw the shadow, my hopes of proof were gone. I got nothing. Just when I was going to pause the video and delete it, I heard a voice in the video. I can swear I didn't hear this when I was recording. As I mentioned before, it was very quiet, and if someone said anything, I could have heard it in the recording. The moment I came from the balcony to the middle of the room where I saw the shadow, a deep voice was recorded in the video. What it said was incoherent. It was my first ever EVP. A few weeks later, I was in my room texting my friends and slowly felt very sleepy. It was around 3 a.m., and I had some local horror podcasts downloaded in my phone, and it suddenly started playing. I paused it and closed my eyes again. The podcast started playing again, and this time I couldn't move. Suddenly, a bell started ringing in front of my door. I tried to scream, but I struggled to scream to no use. My parents are light sleepers, and it's impossible that my parents won't wake up to a sound this loud and not help. The sound of the bell dimmed slowly and stopped. Finally, my throat could make a voice, and the podcast stopped. I was able to move again. I asked my parents if they heard anything, and they were surprised to hear what happened, and they confirmed they didn't hear anything. A month after this incident, everything was normal, and I came back from school. My mom asked what happened last night. I wasn't sure what she was talking about. My mom explained they heard me scream, and everyone woke up and ran into my room. I was standing in, on my bed and pointing towards the balcony, and there was nothing there. I'm surprised because I'm sure I didn't sleepwalk, and I remember the exact time I woke up the night before to drink water, so I didn't remember what happened that night. The very next day, something invisible grabbed my mom's head and threw her towards a wall. Thankfully, the injury wasn't severe, just a little swelling. She swore she didn't trip, and she felt something grab her head, but it was invisible. We almost forgot these happened nearly a year after nothing paranormal happened. It was the season of mangoes in our country. Every house had at least one basket of mangoes. It was 10 p.m., and I was cutting a mango, and my mom suddenly scolded me. Why did you tell me your dad wanted a mango when he didn't? I was shocked as I was sitting there the whole time cutting a mango, and I explained to my mom that it wasn't me. My mom said that she clearly saw me coming to her room, and it was my voice that she heard, but it wasn't me. I can't be in two places at once. After that happened, we got our apartment blessed, and nothing paranormal happened. We did some renovations, and again, a week after that, my little brother saw a shadow. I told this story to a paranormal investigator, and right after he heard that we did some renovation, he asked if we did anything with the main door entrance. We did, and he said, blessing a house is like a mosquito net. We changed the doors. This means now that there are holes in the net, and now the shadow can come in again. In May of 2020, I discovered long, straight scratches on my back from top to bottom. It's impossible for me to scratch my back like this. And one day in the middle of May, I heard a knock on my door. The door was open, and there was no one standing there. A minute later, I heard a knock again, and this time I turned to see immediately, but no one was there. May 31st, 2020, at 3.50 a.m., my elder brother ran into our parents' room and told them that something grabbed his hand and pulled it. He didn't see what it was. Late last night, I slept in my younger brother's room at the charging socket right next to the bed. At 12 a.m., I was texting a friend, and suddenly I heard two heavy footsteps. The moment I heard the footsteps, my keyboard lagged, and the bed vibrated the way it vibrates when someone stomps near it. I quickly got the holy water and sprinkled a little around the bed and on the bed. Tonight, I tried to sleep in the same room. When I turned off the lights, it was 11.45 p.m., and I was watching a YouTube video when I heard the footsteps again. This time, I ran out of the room immediately. Man, 
there was a lot going on there. Yeah. It, it seemed, um, is this the first time we've gotten a story where there was a pretty violent type of entity? Um, yeah, where it was more so physical touch. Um, yeah. I believe we've had some where they were violent and destroying things. But no, I don't think we've had any. I don't think I've, I've heard any stories or read any stories about th- someone actually being physically um, assaulted. Yeah, like being pushed. We, we've gotten, uh, I think we, we've had some where people have been scratched, but not definitely not, you know, and they've woken up with scratches. They weren't like aware that they were being scratched, but... As far as the the dad being pushed, or the yeah the dad you know, or the was mom pushed the, in mom's the mom's head, head. man yeah, <laughs> and then you think this can't be the little three foot tall entity that's doing this. <laughs> I mean, you know, getting getting thrown around by something the size of a toddler. Yeah, you. I mean, you never know, and <laughs> this is the first one that we've had where um, EVP was mentioned. Yeah, I actually have. A, he gave me a link to that. I actually have that. Uh, I'll probably I'll probably post it on Instagram. Post on our Instagram page. So, and if you've never heard um, the ter- the term EVP, that is electronic voice phenomenon, um, and that's just when sounds are found on electronic recordings. Yeah. Um, and usually, a lot of times, it's often found in recordings with static or other background noises. Um, yeah. The movie The Poltergeist, I believe, the little girl was up close on the TV screen and the static and snow and she can hear. Yeah, so that's a good example yeah. of the EVP. Yeah. Um, yeah, you get those a lot. Uh, watching the Ghost Hunter shows and and all that. Um, but yeah, that it's uh, pretty... Uh, it's pretty interesting, but it's also pretty creepy. I, I don't know. I'd be probably... I'd probably be so scared... Uh, knowing that something is like physically attacking people, that's definitely something that's uh, it's not a good entity. It's it's definitely not. It's far from a poltergeist. This thing is like really bad, mm-hmm. bad news for sure. Yeah, definitely. And then the sound of the bells. Um, <clears throat> when this person was laying in the bed, I'm not sure if they actually had bells in the home that they were hearing, or if there was just all of a sudden they heard bells while they were laying there. But the sound of bells, um, I believe we mentioned bells um, in a, another episode. I mentioned something about bells. And I did look into bells a little bit further. I, I do know that I keep bells around for a reason because they, they do notify you. But um, I did a little bit more looking into the bells. And the bells, that were they're typically in, in history, they're used to um, call for people or to notify people of something. Um, and they've been, not- they've been used in celebrations, weddings. And yes, to call people and also to signal of bad news. And that's a reason why we keep them around for um, yeah. paranormal activities. Um, they, they're they used in a slower ringing for like funerals, invaders, war, um, and to notify people of plagues, um, to bring out the dead bodies so that they can, it's time to bury the dead bodies, bring them out after the plagues are over. Uh-huh. Um but when you bring when you ring them slow, it's a sign of bad luck or or death, um, or an indicator that an entity is in the area. So when she when this person rather mentioned that they heard the bells, that's always a not a good sign. Definitely not a good sign. Yeah, you know when you're talking about the bells, the slow ringing bells. I don't know why, but I think of when Game of Thrones when Cersei was having the walk <laughs> of shame, and they're like shame. Shame. Yes, and it was a slow <laughs> it ring. It was a slow ring. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it was a that bad was bad. Indication. Yeah, that was a bad indicator for Cersei right there. <laughs> she had to walk through King's Landing naked. <laughs> I love that. Shame. <laughs> After you show me that, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, this story had a lot of references to time of day. Yeah. Um, this person mentioned two AM and three AM a lot. Yeah, and that three AM is the witching hour. So Yeah. And uh the witching hour three it's three I found three to four AM and I wanted to know what it was about that time slot that made that the witching hour. Um, and I did find that that time slot, um, 
supposedly is when the veil between life and death is the thinnest. And that allows the spirits and ghosts to travel between the two worlds. And that's why they call it the witching hour. So, yeah, yeah, the the witching hour, so to speak. And they had a lot of activity during that time of day. They did. They did. I I wonder what um, the history is of that apartment. But honestly, I don't even think that whatever it is, it seems to, you know, I don't know if 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 any type of demonic activity or anything like that, any type of dark energy, if it's connected to the building or the people. Yeah, that that's a interesting point. Um, like, are other people in the apartment building are they experiencing the same thing or right? Because the people above them was the landlord, right? I don't know said, if they were the native. I don't. I'm, they didn't mention that. They said something about they didn't hear that same noise because they inquired. Yeah, they asked the other people in the other apartment if they had heard anything, and they said no. Yeah, and they said they weren't doing anything either. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so I'm not. I'm not too sure. I don't about know that. if it's. Uh, yeah, that's it's. Um, there's there's different things that I would like to know if if it's connected to them, that the family that's actually there, or if it's connected to the actual apartment, mm-hmm. or what. But it's 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 definitely some some dark energy going on there. Yeah, definitely. But then they had a whole year of nothing. Yeah. Was that year? Uh, it, it, it was it after that they they got it blessed that it was a year. Yeah, I want to say it was a year after. After then, of course, the, the the new door being replaced just basically opened it right back up. To, to come back in. And that is something I, if if someone knows anything about the remodeling and the movement of the original entrance, um, please let us know because I, I did not find a lot of information about that. Um, the, what I did find was that uh, spirits don't like the original, I guess, construction moved um, yeah. simply because you have messed with their territory or domain yeah. um, so they don't care for that too much um, but if anybody has anything else to share about that please let us know yeah that was um that was a good story uh again i'll probably i'll i'll ask for permission to do it but i'll, I'll get that um evp put up on instagram so people can hear it uh, i've i've watched it and it is a little uh <laughs> It's not. It's not very fun. I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it at all. I watched it at night, and I was like, "Man, I'm about to have nightmares." You picked the wrong time of day to watch anything related yeah. to an EVP because that is that is scary. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. You know, I don't like to watch or read anything bad before bedtime, and yeah, that and messed me up. Not a good up. idea. <laughs> So yeah, that was um that was our two stories. These were some really good stories. I like these. I do too. Yeah. I um, enjoyed sharing them. Yeah, hopefully uh you all can come up with a solution to to your problems. Um the first one, uh Umbrella Man, I think Umbrella Man really needs to try to find a priest or or someone that could bless him, his house or something cuz whatever it is, it, it's him. That whatever it is, this stuff is happening. The, the things that are happening, it's surrounding him. It's definitely so there's got to be something him. about him that that is opening him up to these things. And um, yeah, so definitely try to look into finding someone who can uh, point you in the right direction of uh, of a way to get rid of that. Definitely. But yep, yeah, that was that was it. That's a. This episode is a wrap. Um, thank you for listening. Um, uh, yeah, this is this was a pretty good episode. It ran a little bit longer than usual, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, thank you for listening. Um, you can follow us on Instagram at Paranormal Podcasts. Uh, you can email us at Paranormal. You oh sorry, I said Paranormal Podcast. I meant Paranormal Universe Podcast. <laughs> You can follow us uh, on Instagram at Paranormal Universe Podcast. Uh, 
You can email us at paranormaluniverse at gmail.com. Um, and also, you can please subscribe to us on wherever you are listening right now. Make sure you subscribe, uh, rate, and review. That helps us out a lot, but also subscribing will let you know whenever a new episode is um, available. So anything you got to say? Thank you for sending these great stories in. Please continue to send stories in, and thank you so much for listening. All right, stay safe. Thank you.